Ever wondered what it means to become a senior software engineer? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kun. I'm a partner level engineer at Microsoft. And in this video, I will share with you what I wish I knew when I was getting started. Senior software engineer is a title that typically maps to L5 in standard leveling system. Reaching this level is a big milestone in a software engineer's career. It signals that you are now carrying significant responsibility for your team's success and being looked up to as a role model for junior engineers. A common misconception that I keep hearing is that to become a senior software engineer, you need to be really good at coding and learn a lot of different design patterns, programming languages, and technology stacks. That is wrong. Throughout my career, I've known over a hundred senior engineers and not a single one of them got there by simply learning how to write more beautiful code or how to use more languages. To understand how to get to this stage, you first need to know the key differences between L4 and L5. I covered this in a previous video and you can find a link to it in the description below. Long story short, L4s are typically given a clear direction to build a well-defined feature or solution to a problem. They do need to handle some complexity, but generally speaking, they are told what needs to be built. L5s, however, are expected to solve ambiguous problems that don't always have clear solutions. For example, how to reduce the latency of an API or how to improve user engagement of a product feature. It's their responsibility to help the team figure out what the right solutions are and potentially work with other people on the team to get the solutions built. Promotion typically happens when you have proven your L5 skills by solving a few of such problems for the team. So now the question becomes, what does it take to solve an ambiguous and complex problem? First, let's talk about getting into the right mindset. As L4s, you are expected to build well-defined solutions. As long as you have built your features according to the spec, you are meeting expectations. This typically results in L4 engineers having a mindset of focusing on activities, which means being productive, writing a lot of documentation and test cases, and communicating a lot. However, because L5s need to solve problems, they can't just focus on activities alone. They need to focus on the outcome or impact of their activities. It doesn't matter how much code they write or how beautiful the code looks. If it didn't actually solve the problem, they failed. The mindset of focusing on impact is the first leap you should take to accelerate your transition into a senior engineer. Once you have internalized that, you then need a proper skill set to help you solve the problems. Let's walk through the problem solving process to show you what that looks like. When you get assigned an ambiguous problem, the first thing you should realize is that there can be a lot of different potential solutions to it. We call that a solution space. The first skill you will need is ideation, which is the process of mapping out this solution space and enumerating all the potential solutions. This can be done in multiple ways, but generally speaking, I recommend that you don't do that alone. The more problems you solve, the more you realize how limited a single person's perspective usually is. So instead, you want to exchange thoughts with other people. And this is called brainstorming. Now the thing with brainstorming is that the brains are not going to storm themselves. Someone needs to identify the need for a brainstorm and get it initiated. And if you are a senior person on the team, you should assume that's on you to make it happen. Of course, you can also flag this to your PM or designers to see if they want to facilitate the process as well. In which case, you can delegate the work to them and be a contributor who provides inputs in the process and make sure it does produce useful outputs that help you enumerate potential solutions. I will have a future video that specifically talks about how to host effective brainstorming sessions. Please remember to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss it. Once you map out the solution space, 
what you will soon realize is that it's going to take too much time to build all the potential solutions. This is where you need the second skill, prioritization, which is how you assess the return of investment for each candidate solution and can then create a ranked list of ideas so you can work on the ones that give you the highest chance of success. Prioritization is such an important skill. If you look at some of the highest performing engineers who achieve a lot more impact than their peers, you will notice that they have the same 24 hours in a day as everyone else. But oftentimes, 80% of the impact is achieved through 20% of the work. And what these high performing engineers do really well is that they are very smart about prioritization and always focus their time on those 20% high impact work. There are many different frameworks to help you with prioritization. I will cover them in a future video as well. Sometimes after you prioritize the list of ideas, you will realize there is a lot of work to be done. And if you do it all by yourself, it's not going to meet your team's timeline. This is where you need the third skill. Delegation. L5 engineers don't always do this because it depends on the situation. But it's safe to assume that all L5 engineers need to prove that they are capable of delegating effectively so that they can do it when needed. Delegation is a leadership skill and it's very beneficial to master even beyond L5. It also deserves its own future video as well. But for now, I will share two recommendations. One, Take an intern if you have the opportunity. Working with an intern gives you a direct environment to practice leadership skills that you may not get otherwise. You will be able to learn what it takes to coach someone else, to influence their decisions, and enable them to succeed. Secondly, take a training called Situational Leadership. There are many YouTube videos available as well. This gives you the key concepts you need to understand before you can delegate effectively. Once you got the solutions built, you would need the next skill, measurement. This is where you use a data-driven approach to validate whether the solution has indeed solved the problem or not. Ideally, the success criteria or measurement plan is defined upfront before you even start implementing the solutions so that the measurement itself can be baked into your execution plan and timeline. For example, you might need to do some logging work to make the results measurable. Having proper measurements helps you track progress, validate success, and communicate impact. Doing this is an essential part of how senior engineers operate. All right. I hope this video gave you a good overview of what the leap looks like from junior to senior engineer. If you found this helpful, please click the like button so that more people can benefit from it. I will continue to make videos to help software engineers like you succeed. See you next time.